Hi, this is Father Bill Smith, uh, pastor of St. Charles Borromeo Church in Brooklyn Heights, welcoming you to our most recent episode of St. Charles at Home. When uh, the priest who gave the homily for Sunday will speak to a member of the parish to see uh, 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 what uh, questions uh, developed from it and how we can all deepen our, our faith journey. Today, we're very happy to have Warren Leash Rule, a, a member of our parish for a number of years who has uh, regrettably moved to, uh, uh, to Durham, North Carolina. And, but who uh, still joins us by, uh, uh, by, by uh, Zoom for Mass and is involved in our, uh, in our Thursday night book club. So, Lauren, it's wonderful to, uh, to, uh, to have you here by, by electronic miracle. And uh, please tell us something about you yourself. Yes, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy that, um, you know, given the circumstances of the world today, um, Zoom and other um, virtual uh, gatherings have allowed me to stay connected with St. Charles, which uh, really gave me a home um, during my time in Brooklyn. Um, uh, while I was in Brooklyn, I was the senior director of education for a foster care agency located just down the street from St. Charles um, at HeartShare St. Vincent Services. Um, where I was really connected with our young people who are in foster care, who are aging out. Um, these were young college students and other students who were seeking vocational um, opportunities. And St. Charles really gave me a place um, where I could connect with other young professionals uh, like myself that um, were uh, eager to serve as mentors, um, which uh, my young people were really uh, eager to, to connect with and find opportunities um, to, uh, you know, get that uh, mentorship um, that they really needed uh, to get the jump on life that, um, you know, would set them on the right paths. Um, at St. Charles, I also felt that I got um, the uh, home and the really the support that I needed um, for um, battling a chronic um, lupus um and so you know this um homily really speaks to me about like the community coming together and really supporting and um asking for forgiveness and seeking peace um so you know, i really was um you know uh excited um that i was chosen to talk to father bill about this homily um when it uh speaks so much about community and uh the need to come together um through diversity and through um circumstances that are sometimes seem insurmountable um so i'm really excited to be here well great so you um mentioned that you were uh, interested in, uh, in, in the topic of bringing the, par of bringing the parish together and diversity. Would you like to be a little more specific about that? Yeah, so, um, so I know that you mentioned that um, Jesus loves diversity and um, you know that even when it's difficult and when it's inconvenient, like that's like when he like is the most um, like ready to like bring people together. And I think that, um, you know, during the times like we've seen, um, you know, political and cultural um, unrest in our country. Um, and I think that, um, you know, with this homily that you gave, you talked about forgiveness and um, and also the, the power of forgiveness. So, um, you know, I was hoping that we could speak a little bit more about uh, you know what it's like to come together uh, when you're not exactly on the same uh, page as someone else in your community um, and even though you know you might be coming together as Catholics um, mm -hmm. and needing to like find common ground. Well a, a friend of mine who is a professor uh, emailed me about this homily and she said um, uh, that I dated myself. And I said, what do you mean I dated myself? Uh -huh. Well, you show uh, 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 the, uh, the model that I was using 
uh, was very much the time when I was last couple of years in the seminary, which mean, could mean about 45 years ago. Things were moving towards looking at the at the cities and the uh, the uh, urban areas in which uh, uh, the gospels and the other writings came out of. Uh, this is no longer that popular. But to me, as a pastor, it makes just so much sense. Get down into the, the real nitty gritty, if you will, of what's going on in a community. And uh, we see this both in St. Matthew, probably Antioch, and uh, Paul's letter that was read, that, that, we, that, that we read over the summer from Romans, which emphasized the small house churches. And Paul, we see that as well in Paul with, with Corinthians. And it always struck me as this be so much easier to just tell people, well, you, you, you go over there where, where everybody's going to be think exactly the same. And you go over there where other people are going to think exactly the same. In this case, those born Jews and those born, born Gentiles. And, uh, 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 you know, we'll all say that we follow Jesus and we'll all say that we, um, uh, uh, we 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 believe the same creed, which would be true, but we're not going to really get together. We're not going to have the embarrassing moments of meals when some people can't even look at some stuff uh, with you know, without retching because of being you know because because of the way that they grew up, and uh, and and uh, and and, and uh, other people have no idea what Jewish law is. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I've always felt the kind of uh, uh, that that made so much sense. And the more I, and the longer I was a pastor, I saw that, and I saw particularly in Matthew, when you look at the 18th chapter, which is what this is from, that he was facing everything I'm I was facing. The parable begin uh, the story begins with. Uh, or the 18th chapter with Jesus asking who's the greatest in the kingdom. And then he brings, that's when he brings the little kid up. And then they do the little, uh, the importance of removing temptations. Then they do a little on divorce. But then they go into um, uh, the parable, uh, 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 the, the parable of the lost sheep. But Jesus, uh, where, uh, uh, the, the good shepherd, Jesus goes, goes after one person then brings them back. And that's when they get very practical. Okay, you have the sinner. The sinner is returned. They've received the call of Jesus. What do you do? So someone points out the sin, and then you have two people, and um, it's worked out really rather um, uh, in, in some detail, which the others don't. Then they... Um, uh, uh, it's, it's only after that that Peter brings up forgiveness. Okay, suppose we, 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 we've gone through this whole system and probably they've seen it. People who just don't get along. There may not even be sin there. There's just tension. And so he's very proud of himself. He says seven times. The rabbi said three. He's doubling in and adding one. So that's, uh, 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 he's really proud of himself. And then Jesus says 70 either seven times seven or seven, seven times 70, depending upon how you translate it, which means an a infinite number. Mm -hmm. But you never give up. Why? Because Jesus never gave up. And to me, that just strikes as at the essence of everything the community is. Because if we just try to uh, cover over everything, every possible difference, every possible way of... Uh, of, of, uh, of annoying each other. We'll be playmates. We won't be parishioners. And so that's, that's why, that's what, that, that's why uh, uh, those readings, both from Romans and from Matthew, really struck a chord with me for what we have, have, have to do now. Not only in this parish, but really any parish that wants, that wants to, try, to thrive. So how do you navigate that? How do you push parishioners sometimes when you feel that they may need to like step outside their comfort zone or they may be um, 
you know, traveling down a path that might not really bring peace to the parish or, or be like the best for the whole com the community at large? Very rarely, and I've been a pastor, I've been a priest for over 40 years and a pastor for over 20. Have I had to directly speak to someone? And I try to follow what the, uh, what the 18th chapter suggests. I'll, I'll go individually. If that doesn't work, maybe I'll suggest that, that we speak to other people. And um, it's, or it's, it's never been theological. It's always been personal. That uh, 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 Someone would just not get along with a, another person and they're both sort of pushing for things. You don't, often in a parish, you get not the uh, people who will come from different backgrounds, but the people who were in with the last pastor and people who were out with the last pastor. And the ins want to stay in and the outs want to get in. And so there's a, there's a maneuvering around that when you choose uh, leaders. <laughs> You got you never do. As you, as you know, I believe in the um, uh, in, in the individual meeting, and I don't do. I told people when I came here, I wasn't changing a light bulb until I had at least twenty five meetings, and I wasn't making a decision until I had fifty, and we weren't having any kind of parish meeting until I had seventy five. Because that way, I, I would have a better idea of what the parish was, you know, who was speaking to whom and who didn't speak to people. And, but here again, you don't just say, I'm gonna pick one group. You gotta be certain that everybody is, um, is represented. Right. And so that it's usually more than just, it's very, very rare that, you, that, you, that I've had to at least talk to, talk to somebody. It's happened, but has it happened here, interestingly. Uh, the um it it does occur not that you try because you don't try to avoid the conflict you try to have it out in the open in a non-threatening environment where people can express their disagreements not only about issues but also sometimes their personal things that have built up over decades and uh, but have to be addressed um i was in one parish where uh, one person told me, I got these two people, both of them were excellent human beings, very devoted to the parish, been there forever. And one person said, uh, he now believes in miracles because I got them in a room together and they didn't yell at each other. <laughs> that was one of my great accomplishments in 40 years. Nice. But I don't, uh, but it, uh, I, I think it's pointless to try to avoid you know, to do everything you possibly can to, uh, to avoid conflict. It's just not reality. Let's have it. Let's get people to, to express themselves. I've had extremely good, I won't say luck because there was a great deal of prayer and blah, blah, blah in it. Our Blessed Lady has really helped me with, um, with bringing people uh, together. I'm not that they're going to be bosom buddies, but at least they'll see that there's something important to do and they'll do it. Right. And do you think it's harder to, um, I think we talked about this kind of in the faith sharing group, like that it's harder um, to sometimes forgive people that are closest to us. But I think in this um, particular instance, it's like sometimes like harder to connect with or to forgive someone who is um, maybe more distant than us, uh, to us. Well, it's they're both difficult, but they're difficult in different ways. Because the people who know you and frankly love you know where to really put that knife. I mean, nobody can do it as well uh, as like a child. Zing! Or a parent on the way back, or a husband or a wife, or a you know, brother or sister or a best friend. With people who you don't know all that well, where there's no really bond of love or uh, I mean, this is sort of general love of wishing the good for the other but nothing no real emotional commitment that is um uh that's difficult because you don't really know 
perhaps why that person doesn't like you. Uh, it might have been something you said. This has happened to me time and time again, where I think I'm being funny. I think I'm being witty. It's not perceived as such. It's being perceived as either insensitive or uh, cutting or uh, something I really don't didn't mean. But I'm but until that's expressed, and then um, until I'm willing then to ask for forgiveness, uh, there uh, uh, there's no. Uh, uh, it, there's no reconciliation. So first you have to find out why, uh, why you're not getting along <laughs> with your loved ones you know perfectly well. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And I think that like, as um, now like, it's gonna be harder to like tell like why we're not getting along, um, you know, as like the, like I said, like the political climate and like the cultural mm -hmm. climate is like, so inundated with things that can like be uh, mis misinterpreted uh, mm -hmm. at the drop of a hat. Yeah, and certainly politically, uh, people are are really not going to come to too many. Uh, there's not going to be a great deal of, re of reconciliation with this. Uh, we're just going to have to agree to disagree. Uh, but as I say, it's, uh, it's, it's unrealistic to ask people to leave their, their prejudices and their, um, their expectations and biases at the door of the church, uh, but to, be, to recognize what they are. And perhaps during the course of whatever, to recognize that you have to offer them up. And um, since we as Catholics have a very um, clear and, um, the, uh, and um, forthright uh, social teaching or set of social teachings, which neither political party much uh, or uh, predisposition even remotely connects to. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, there's something for all of us to to recognize, uh, most particularly the common good, which has been lost. Right, right, exactly. And do you think you'll you'll um, be pre preaching more about the common good as we get closer to the election and like our social teachings? Well, uh, the, the Holy Father has made it impossible for us not to. Yes. Because on the third of um, of October or um, the eve, I think, of the feast of of Saint um, of of Saint Francis. He is going to issue an encyclical on solidarity. Ah. Uh, one of the great principles of Catholic social teaching and one that, uh, that connects very, very uh, clearly to common good. And one that um, there's some, there will be something there for everyone to dislike. Um, it's the sort of thing where if something doesn't personally affect and annoy you you didn't read it mm -hmm. well, uh, we both part participated in what I started calling the Thursday night fights the uh, book uh, the book club where we, where we used William Cavanaugh's field hospital which got right. a lot of people really ticked off uh, and I was so jealous because that's what I want one senior Lapinto and I wanted when we preached on social justice a couple of years ago, because there was something there to offend everybody, and nobody really said anything, which was right. very disturbing to us. Uh, right. Uh, I'm sure the Holy Father, with his customary ability, will be able to stir the pot. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, that's good. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, it, and it kind of ties like in with like this, like the homily that you gave this week, I think, because like you talked about like the Gentiles and the Jews living together and like, and Matthew wanting them to be like to come together instead mm -hmm. of like, t and bringing them together instead of living in separate um, cities, 
they were united and they were still like coming together and uh, living as one peoples and, and uh, throughout like their lifetime in the, in the city. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, these are, uh, um, again, to date myself, there used to be a, um, a hobby that people had of grinding gemstones and you would get these stebby precious uh, 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 stones and you put them in the thing they look, they look like a blender i never had one but a, but a friend of mine did and you put in very abrasive things sand and other uh, and other smaller stones and you grind them up together it was only by the grinding that that you, you would see the actual beauty of the stone and I think that's a good, uh, uh, if very dated, <coughs> example that that's what we are, uh, uh, by our own oddities, our own eccentricities, our own biases and things that perhaps drive us crazy, are we able to really understand e each other and bring out, in, in some ways, the best in each other? If everybody's the same, how does that the body of Christ? I mean, how is one the foot and one the arm and one the le uh, and, and one the heart and one the uh, and one the lung? We have to have all these all these differences in order for us to truly uh, function and be who we are. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Now you would, of course, have had a great deal of experience with that in your uh, at least former job, uh, uh, which was very handy for us to when we started the, um, uh, the young uh, professionals, that we uh, tried to reach out to the uh, people that you were working with. And we had them for mass, of course, and we took up, uh, and instead of uh, uh, buying them things, we gave them, um, uh, gift cards or, um, that they could use, or debit cards that, that, that they could use for, for whatever they wanted, partic particularly those who had children themselves. Um, would you like to, uh, to just sort of uh, to tell us some things about that, that about how we as a parish would be able to be uh, helpful uh, to, uh, uh, to, to children, to, you know, to young people in foster care? who are now, of course, probably experiencing uh, a very difficult times. Yeah, I think for the young people that I know um, who are aging out of foster care, what they really need is just the, the support and those connections that are um, strong and, um, and that are there uh, as like lifelong supports. Um, they need people there that like when they say they're going to step up that they really do and they um, practice, you know, like practice what they preach um, uh, and they actually like follow through with what they say they're going to do. Um, so they need mentors. They need people who are willing to, um, you know, serve as, uh, um, you know, as, um, and, uh, as um, examples and, and jobs and things like that. Um, you know, they need uh, those examples that they weren't given um, through their, either their own parents or their own family members. Mm -hmm. um, so they really need um, supports and connections that all young people that at ages like in their young 20s need. Um, and I know that our community and our parish has like the, the, the um, the willpower and the hard work and the determination and the and the people power um, to make it happen that our young people um, who are aging out of foster care can really um, have those supports that they need. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is something that uh, I hope that you'll be able to continue to work with us with because it's so important. Uh, as uh, I do not claim in any way to be um, uh, unbiased on this, my, my father was, uh, was a foster child who was um, raised, uh, uh, who thank God was adopted by, the, uh, uh, by a family uh, in, the, in, in the 1920s. Uh, yeah. 
And I would, uh, uh, so I've always been extremely grateful for, for, for people who do that. And I think we have to be sensitive for people who have to build their own families, um, uh, so to speak. And if a church particular, uh, uh, that, sees, that, that wishes to be a community is not able to extend community, in a very real way, uh, you know, what in the African American church we would call a church family. Um, if we, if 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 a church cannot provide family for people who need it, then I kind of wonder what's it doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> turn it, turn it into a bowling alley. Uh, it's not, it's not succeeding as a church. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, I think that's our time. Uh, so thank you very much for your uh, for, for for participating with us. And it's all uh, though we don't see you in, in well, we, I guess we see almost nobody in church anymore. But yeah. uh, <laughs> but it's 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 always good seeing you several times a week. Yeah, at uh, mass, but also at the. Um, uh, our faith sharing group on Sundays, right. and my particular favorite, the um, uh, uh, the Vespers that we have on yes. uh, on Friday. Yes, so it's, it's, nice. it was great seeing you. Thank, thank you. Thank, okay. All right. Bye. Bye. sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. At what name have you chosen? Mary. Sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Appropriate. I think I mentioned that before. If you seal with the gift of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Okay, Jacqueline. What name have you chosen? Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <laughs> yes. What name have you chosen? Be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.